Hi all, uh, once again, good morning and a warm welcome to Agile Network India. We'll start our uh, day one with Bangalore chapter, uh, which is a session talk on impact of gamification on agile world by Survajit Sarkar. Uh, he's an entrepreneur at mydearherbs.com. Uh, Siddharth will be facilitating this session. I request Siddharth to uh, switch on his uh, cam and come on microphone. Uh, hi, Nisha. Thank you hi, so much. Hi, Shida. All right. Good morning, everyone. And a warm welcome to Agile Network India. And this is the Nama Bangalore chapter. This, this is our first session of today's, uh, the August 2021. This is our first session. And the topic for today's session is the impact of gamification on Agile world. So what is gamification? Gamification is about using game principles in business context to get business results. So there is this, there is a corporate, they wanted to deploy a tooling system in their, uh, you know, in their, in their organization and they use gamification and they gave stars to each of their employees. And because of to want to want to get more stars, people were you know they, they they adopted this and it made it very fun so this is just a basic but however we are fortunate that among us we have an individual who is a product manager turned entrepreneur who specializes in building profitable digital products he has over 12 years of experience in producing mobile and social games. An experimenter, a product management and product design expert, he has been applying research-based principles to understand the core needs of the user. Our speaker takes long drives to for rebooting his system. Please help me welcome our speaker for today, Subrajit. Thank you so much, Siddharth, for the warm welcome and the introduction. I really appreciate uh, uh, you're putting in all the talk, all the you know words together on my behalf. Thank you so much for that, and thank you Agile Network for giving this opportunity for me to present uh, in this forum. I'm really honored to be here. All right. So uh, without much ado, we'll uh, we'll get started with the agenda for today, or uh, rather the presentation for today, uh, which is basically impact of gamification in the Agile world. Now, um, we all are aware of gamification to some uh, extent or the other, and all of us are aware of uh, games for sure. So gamification is uh, not, not, uh, not close to what uh, games are all about. You know, like uh, gamification is applying the core mechanics of what makes a game more engaging and applying those principles in the real life, in the, uh, in the enterprise world, in the consumer side, and different kind of processes to make them more engaging and to hit the key matrices of any of those. So there has to be a goal behind anything. For example, if it is a process like Agile, where um, there are different goals of, you know, like uh, the processes at the end of the day, right? So uh, gamification is using the core mechanics or the human psychology of what drives people into a gaming application, using them in non-gaming application, and uh, engaging and enticing users and also retaining them in the long term basis right so that is what uh, gamification in nutshell is now let's look at uh, so gamification is by no means a very new thing you know it has been uh, implemented for ages and uh, i i'm mean, really before the game uh, the term gamification was coined uh, it was already in use in practical use so we'll start with a few examples just to give us an idea of the history of gamification and how it has been implemented so far. So um, this is a little, uh, you know, uh, story from Taiwan government. So they have they were having a really hard time in collecting taxes uh, from the st local stores because um, you know when they collected the payments, none of them actually paid the taxes, right? Because they didn't issue a receipt to the purchasers. So well, what the government decided into uh, to change that behavior of the consumers where they must go for a receipt, they introduced 
the a lottery ticket in in any every receipt that they collected so for example if i went into the store to purchase um, my daily groceries i would actually be receiving a receipt which will have the receipt number will coincide with the lottery number so every two months um, um, they played this lottery and the winners got a lot of rewards so you can see you know like the amount of rewards that has been offered uh, of late uh, you know by the first first prize second prize winners and also on and so forth right so this is um, something that was dated back from in 1950s so that i mean obviously the ui and everything has evolved since then but uh, the core principles were dated back um, to 1950s right so o power is another example very good example they have been now bought over by oracle as oracle powers they were the key uh, power suppliers in us and uh, so now their their core principle was uh, to actually help the consumers to uh, conserve energy so they wanted to find out a way and eventually came up with a gamification technique which actually helped them um, you know help the consumers conserve a lot of energy so what they did is that like uh, when they issued their um, you know monthly bills to the consumers they also came up with a, a, a very nice you know like progress bar on how the consumers are faring in terms of the key matrices that they were targeting right in which case uh, in this case the key matrices is basically like the conservation of the energy so as you can see that you know like as um uh, consumer received a receipt or the monthly invoice at the end of the month they uh, found themselves to be in a spot where where you know how well they were doing in terms of conserving the energy how well the neighborhoods, the average neighborhood um, was, were doing in terms of conserving the energy, and what is the most efficient uh, neighbor doing in terms of conserving the energy, right? So this uh, this um, somehow gave uh, a very healthy competition uh, to the uh, you know the con uh, consumers of electricity by O power. There's another in interesting, I mean, like uh, this is uh, something that has been uh, there forever now. Like, you know, when you see a sale happening, it always comes with the end date, uh, which gives you a feeling that, you know, like if you are not going to avail a sale right away in the next 12 hours, 53 minutes, uh, you would be losing a lifetime opportunity, something like that. Right. But again, in the next um, cycle, you tend to uh, you actually like inevitably see the same thing happening. But, you know, like that, that's what drives human behavior as well um once you you see this kind of uh, uh, you know like a, a date associated with the sale happening then you tend to jump into it uh, to actually avail the opportunity right away right uh, knowingly or unknowingly so fast filling options uh, so this is also one of the gamification techniques that have been used uh, you know like uh, uh, by several of the consumers as well as by the enterprise uh, you know side of things where um, you give the you know the feeling that you know like um, there are limited seats available and if you don't join right now you are going to lose this opportunity to join uh, you know this uh, event or this you know like um, uh, this particular um, any any kind of you know like uh, a spot that you might uh, be looking at right now another example is wikipedia so um, we all know that you know like uh, nobody gets anything uh, by actually posting something that they care about in wikipedia right but one still does that because they care about the things that they are like so passionate about and um, also they want to you know like uh, project to the world that you know like the information that they are actually projecting is valuable enough although it does not add any value to their resume or to you know like uh, or, or do not give them any monetary benefits as such Right. it's a completely free activity that um, um, that is done but people are really happy to actually post uh, things in wikipedia about um, the things that they're passionate about the things that they care about and they are knowledgeable about right so this is beyond any kind of tangible you know like outcome that um, the users get by posting in wikipedia this is also one of the interesting areas where gamification has uh, you know like subtly played a, played a vital role ikea is another example where they you know like uh, apart from uh, you know so the whole idea of ikea is that they would let it's basically build your own furniture right so they will let uh, the end users you know like uh, assemble their own you know like pieces and then build their own furniture so that uh, apart from saving the you know the company 
from a lot, lot of logistic cost because you know like if the furniture is already built up it will occupy a lot more space right but when it's shipped in different parts right they can actually like uh, package it in such a way that it occupies very little space so that's a company side of things but to the end user right it, it actually drives the psychology of you know um, the ownership and position that they are able to uh, it also you know like helps them feel that they are more creative when they're trying to build something on their own right so it's a win-win situation for both the company ikea as well as the uh, users or the consumers of the product so these are like some of the examples of gamification and in today's session in this particular session we are going to go through what is agile gamification now agile and gamification are two different methodologies right so we are going to see how they have come together and um, actually gamification has uh, impl been implemented on agile framework to you know solve the key problems the core pressing needs uh, of of any scrum master or any any of the you know uh, particular users or um, uh, implementers of agile framework we are going to see that high, uh, how psychological drivers of gamification work on each and every step of the agile process we are also going to see that applying gamification drives on the agile process per se and the advantage, advantages that gamification has on the agile process uh, last but not the least gamification do have a darker side as far as the process is concerned so we are going to just look at some of the uh, darker sides of gamification and that is if it is not implemented in a way it has it, it is supposed to be implemented or if it is not done in the right uh, you know balance of it so let's jump into what is agile gamification so agile and gamification as we said uh, there are two different these uh, are two different methodologies now i'm going to like uh, uh, not go deep into the Octalysis framework. There's, um, there's a whole new framework, uh, and there are several of them which are available, which can, which can be used for gamification. But um, we are going to take the core principles of agile gamific or, or the gamification part of it, which is Octalysis, and then we are going to see how it can be implemented on different stages of the agile process, which is uh, requirement gathering, then designing, developing, testing, and deployment. At each and every stage, we are going to see a few examples where, um, uh, you know, like uh, there has been challenges and how uh, gamification has uh, has helped in terms of overcoming those challenges, right? And there is no one way of doing it. Like there are like, you know, this framework itself provides several different ways in which gamification can be implemented on Agile. But uh, we are going to see a few of the examples which will give us an idea as to how to kickstart with the you know the whole new concept of uh, gamifying the different steps of the agile process so we are going to look at the psychology of uh, gamification that drives the user into doing certain things right so inevitably every human action is actually driven by either the pain or the gain right so these are the two inevitable drivers of human action so if, if there is something that is uh, you know like attracting us It'll be the pleasure part of it, which actually drives users to do certain things, as well as if if the user uh, is you know like faced with a certain certain kind of pain, then um, he or she would be driven away from it. It would be averse of you know like up, uh, doing uh, that particular thing. So that is basically avoiding pain. So pain and gain are these are the like alternative and the you know like uh, alternative drivers which actually motivates the users or drives the users into doing any kind of action in, uh, in in the world right so um, some of the positive uh, enforcements are like epic meaning and calling so we we have seen the example of uh, wikipedia where you know like uh, it was uh, bigger than a uh, user basically the uh, you know user did not care about uh, what benefits they are getting out of it but rather they wanted to do something that they are passionate about right which is beyond like uh, any logical uh, you know benefits that they will be getting or tangible benefits that we, they'll be getting at the end of the day so that's all about epic meaning and calling where uh, users tend to do more than what uh, tangible what is tangible uh, benefit that they are getting back then we have empowerment, empowerment uh, being in control of things. So, for example, uh, we all know about the Lego blocks uh, or, or, or some of the, you know, like uh, we tend to feel empowered uh, when we when we are in control of things. For example, like um, when we are actually playing a game, 
the avatar which is long launched into the virtual world uh, gives you the feeling that you know like um, he or she is actually the king or the queen of the virtual world right and um, they are able to make the calls uh, make the shots make magic happen within the game itself right and the entire control is in the players the players hand so that's what gives the player or the user the experience of uh, empowerment or you know being in control of things so that's also one of the drives which are going to be very helpful in terms of gamification or making users do things that you would want to do you would want them to do so social influence is uh, by no means you know like uh, any less than any of these uh, you know drivers where um, we are all aware that you know like a facebook post uh, when it goes in you know it creates a lot of uh, social um, uh, influence among all the users and then uh, we get a lot of likes and the and comments um, you know like and also propels other users to actually post certain blogs um, you know uh, pictures videos and th things like that right and and uh, we are we are very much influenced by uh, you know all those uh, all those that is happening in the social world right and and uh, that's um, only a recent example but uh, uh, ever since the beginning of time human being has been a social animal and then they are influenced by what the neighbors are doing or what the neighbors have talked about uh, them and uh, what what all you know social spillers uh, are talking about so all those things actually uh, fall into the social influence and these are the key things that drive um, users again in the you know in the virtual world as well or in terms of gamification elements of surprise so all of us are aware of scratch cards and bonuses and things like that and all of us love uh, you know getting uh, bonuses scratch cards and uh, things like that one of the common examples are um, um, you know if you use google pay at the end of any purchase you get this scratch card that pops up right on the screen right and although it uh, it may or may not give any kind of reward but uh, we tend to you know like uh, avail or take an action to actually find out what is on the other side uh, that's one of the key things that uh, uh, also is uh, an element of surprise that uh, propels or drives the user into doing certain things so you get, tend to get hooked into the entire process and then uh, feel um, like making more payments using google pay rather than any other payment modes loss avoidance this is one of the negative uh, you know drivers which will actually uh, you know propel the user away from it so for example um, um, in, in terms of you know like uh, in the insurance policies uh, so the way they are sold is that like you know if something bad happens to any of your assets or any of your like, you know uh, uh, health uh, you go um, i mean the health conditions go deteriorate deteriorate so what is going to happen uh, if, if you don't have an insurance policy right so that's how it starts with and that's what drives the user to actually purchase an insurance policy and there are several other things that um, several other examples like that that actually helps the user go away from it and do certain things uh, in the real life as well so we are going to see uh, how the loss of variance also is going to be uh, you know implemented in gamification in terms of uh, driving the users uh, to do certain things uh, sense of security and impatience right uh, scarcity and impatience um, pardon me so the scarcity concept the whole concept of you know like uh, the seats fast filling up uh, and uh, you know like uh, um, things getting filled up very fast right and there is a very high demand of um, you know things uh, that are like out there in the market so a typical example is in the apple store uh, you know um, uh, one of my experiences had been that you know like um, uh, basically when i went to purchase one of them um, uh, you know like a uh, devices in apple they said that it's not available right away i mean it, it was something that i fell in love with but they said it's not available right right away you'll have to wait for five days and um, then i uh, then then i get a call the next day saying that you know like we have only one piece left that is specially for you and if you don't collect it within like you know a um, few hours it will be taken away so it immediately like uh, propelled me to jump into the car and then get into the store and then purchase the product right so that's something that has that is created by the sense of scarcity and impatience right every human being is inevitably driven by it and if it is tweaked and done in the right way it will give an amazing experience in both the user side as well as the you know the one who is trying to implement it 
ownership and position is also one of the vital uh, you know drivers of uh, gamification where uh, we yeah. tend to curate and uh, you know like we tend to take care of things which are which we own for example we uh, we tend to you know like uh, uh, deck up our car with a lot of accessories and you know like uh, uh, make sure that they are in the you know prime uh, state in terms of cleaning and uh, washing and uh, you know like uh, they are being serviced regularly right uh, just because we want to you know like uh, we have the sense of ownership about it so we take care of them and uh, you know on a regular basis so this is also one of the positive drivers that actually influence people into doing uh, taking certain actions uh, in a desired state achievement is definitely like uh, one of the key aspects of gamification where uh, all the whole concept of points badges and leaderboards also come into picture where um, as the users progresses further they expect you know some kind of tangible um, reinforcement or some kind of positive feedback they they receive they want to receive in the in, the, in their process so that can come in terms of you know tangible things like points badges and leaderboards or they can also be intangible in certain ways uh, right so yeah obviously this is one of the very important aspects of you know gamification or the core drivers psychological drivers that helps user to do or, or propels user to do certain things so we are going to see now how applying gamification drivers into the agile process right so we are going to see at each and every step of the you know agile process there there are certain issues that are, that are commonly faced by certain teams and and then these are like only a few examples that can be in number of issues but then how we can actually implement some of the drivers of human behavior to actually uh, make them do certain things, change their behavior from what what is the norm to what we intend uh, their behavior to be, right? So planning and requirement definition. This is a phase which is primarily owned by the product owner where, uh, let's say Ravi is uh, one of the product owners who have actually recently joined and uh, one of his key um, you know, questions that he asked to himself all the time is that how might I prioritize the right features in this sprint? right so the general behavior is that prioritizing the features by the clients um, the requirements or the the sponsors uh, as they are pushing hard to you know get things done right so we, we always uh, tend to get influenced by the uh, what what the clients is requesting for or the sponsors of the project is requesting for and then um, the product for a product owner falls into the trap that no we have to pick them first since uh, you know like there has been a lot of influencing going on uh, from from that side and rightly so you know like uh, uh, of course uh, they will have their own priorities but as a product owner one should actually not fall for that and should take a, take a step back and understand what really is important for the product so the desired behavior would be prioritizing the features that when combined demonstrates the maximum value for the sprint right and how do we uh, let's look at some of the drives that drivers that will help us you know like uh, take the you know like uh, change the behavior of the product owner to the desired state right epic meaning and calling so this is something that uh, instead of you know like uh, looking for tangible benefits right away uh, we we let the product owner you know like uh, step back and uh, take a bigger picture and look at something which is larger than what the tangible benefit benefits or the tangible rewards might be immediately Right. So in this case, uh, we take an example of a Lego block. So just imagine that, you know, different pieces. I, I am I'm sure like, you know, most of us have already come across uh, the different pieces of the Lego blocks that we used to play in our childhood where we used to stack up, you know, different pieces of the blocks and then uh, make amazing structures um, which look different uh, from one another. Right. So we'll let the product owner, uh, you know, represent uh, the Lego blocks with uh, the pieces of features that are already there. Uh, in offering and that can be that that needs to be prioritized into the sprint so uh, we'll uh, let the product owner you know like uh, play this game and and it can be played jointly as well it can be you know a bunch of product owners uh, together or it can be a product manager and product owner and the designers all of them playing this together it can be a teamwork as well where uh, they stack up these blocks each block representing a particular particular feature into the into the sprint that uh, that is being planned and they can, uh, you know, like stack them together and see which is the block, which is which is the structure that is looking the best. Based on that, they can easily take a decision as to this is the maximum, uh, you know, like um, 
the combination of these features is going to be maximum uh, giving going to give maximum benefit in this uh, particular sprint or the value is going to be the maximum so um, the design and us uh, ux uh, you know prototyping so in this phase where uh, let's say Simanti is one of the prototype designers who has been uh, given a challenge by the product uh, manager that uh, you know a feature has to be designed in such a way that it's really um, helpful and it actually solves the problems um, of, of the end user right so um, her driver her default driver would be how might I design the best user experience that will go on to become the next masterpiece so inevitably, like you know, any designer is uh, first driven by their creative urge to make something amazing, look amazing, right? And then the next driver would be to actually make them more user friendly and things like that. But here, um, what is the general behavior is basically designing the best possible prototype that exceeds the quality of the previous previously designed, uh, you know, uh, prototype. So basically, she is in the quest of you know, like uh, designing. A prototype which is better than what she has designed previously in terms of uh, the look and feel in terms of the usability but what really uh, is a uh, you know the product team caring about is the understanding of the you know the user needs and uh, what are the key challenges the users are having in terms of uh, you know like uh, accessing the particular feature which is already there and uh, designing the prototype that improves the user experience at key decision points of the user so in order to like so there's a thin line between the you know the expected behaviors and what uh, what is already being demonstrated by her so it's um, how do we actually uh, you know make the shift happen so we can use the driver for development and accomplishment where uh, that we make her feel accomplished when uh, she's actually uh, you know getting into the desired behavior so we can actually create a leaderboard where based on the uh, amount of pain points that she has resolved she can be listed on the leaderboard uh, along with the other designers out there so that will make her feel that you know her achievement is actually tied up with uh, solving problem rather than creating her own masterpiece um, which is basically like uh, which is not necessarily bad but uh, it's something that you know like uh, there's a thin line between it and uh, it has to be changed to optimize the performance of the entire team So the ne next one is the um, development phase where we execute the user stories, right? So uh, welcome uh, Pooja, who is a full stack developer and she's really good at what she does, right? And um, one of the questions that she has is, how might I beat the team's velocity in the sprint? So she's really competitive. She really knows her, uh, you know, like, uh, um, you know, how to do her work. But um, so what is the general behavior in this case is getting uh, getting the low hanging fruits out of the way and uh, it's very uh, you know easy for a developer to fall for this that you know they want to get the low hanging fruit out first so that you know it looks good on their chart velocity chart and then look uh, look at some of the you know complicated ones uh, that has a lot of dependencies as well um so which is not uh, necessarily you know like uh, something which is uh, not uh, not imposed upon her because you know like uh, she's always under pressure that uh, she has to meet the team's velocity otherwise the overall team performance uh, overall team's performance will actually go for a toss so that's where um, she wants to actually like uh, you know improve on her velocity as well but uh, that can come at a cost of you know overall objective of the sprint altogether Right, so the result behavior would be execution of the stories in the order of the priorities determined by the product owner. So the product owner is more focused on the you know the benefits that the sprint will already have, as we have seen in the previous uh, slides. Now uh, it's up to the you know the uh, the team to get aligned with that vision and uh, to fall for what is really important or what is going to be what is the priority of the sprint. Right, so we can actually help her get into that state by introducing the driver called scarcity and impatience. So the way in, uh, we had uh, done in some of the previous uh, implementations is that uh, the developers were asked to present to the, you know, the higher management, including the CEO and, uh, you know, the top officials, right? So, and it was a very limited spot, like every, with every call that we had in the weeks, uh, every week uh, we we had only one spot left for the developer to actually like present 
right? So and and uh, they were allowed to present based on the value that they produced instead of um, just the number of story points uh, that was supposed to be taken care in the product project team definitely, but um, the value that was produced and uh, was it really demonstrable uh, the feature that uh, was developed that was uh, uh, the developer uh, herself was allowed to present in uh, in that kind of forum. So it was a real big privilege for the developer to actually be in the hot seat and be able to present to the management, top management, and uh, also get praises. Um, you know that gave her the visibility, that gave her all the you know the uh, appreciation that uh, she did for her work, uh, she got for her work. So um, this is one of the things that can be actually uh, created based on this driver called impatience and scarcity, where uh, the user feels that you know like there is something that is limited and uh, it will be a privilege to actually get into that spot. So assuring the quality of the deliverables. So basically that as a testing team member, like uh, here Neil Gatta is one of the junior QAs where one of the primary questions that he has is how might I beat my previous records of finding X number of bugs, right? This is also one of the common challenges that are faced in a typically software development scenario where um, the QA is actually uh, tempted to find maximum number of bugs that is possible in a particular sprint or in a particular release, right? Based on which they are, they they I mean like uh, they assume they will be judged uh, in the long term. But uh, that is the general behavior. We need to improve on the previous best best records in finding as many bugs as possible. What is the desired behavior? So basically, we want the QA to understand like uh, how has the QA assess the overall quality of the sprint deliverables instead of just falling for uh, you know number of bugs has the quality of the sprint deliverables improved uh, to the, that extent so we are going to use the power uh, empowerment driver here and uh, and and then going to you know like match it with the peers peers rewarding um, them for whatever they have done so the development team here uh, rewards the QA team for actually like you know helping them find uh, different bugs and helping them find the root cause for solving the bugs so if you are rewarding them for this particular reason and if the development team actually gives the kudos or the badges to uh, the qa team they would be inspired to uh, you know like um, doing what is desired and the, so basically that's how the desired behavior of the qa team would actually change to align with the the more valuable part of it which is actually helping the developers find the root cause apart from finding the number of bugs or and also helping them solve the issues. So when it comes to DevOps, uh, the deployment uh, is one of the key aspects where uh, Manoj here is one of the DevOps uh, you know, guy and he is responsible for pushing the build life. So one of the questions that he has is how might I push the build type quickly as soon as possible, right? So here the general build behavior is deploying frequently and ensuring all services are up and running. So that's some, that's a very limited uh, perspective uh, for, a, for a DevOps person, right? Uh, but that's also unfortunately one of the common behaviors uh, witnessed in uh, the dev uh, DevOps team uh, very commonly. So the desired behavior would be has the develop, uh, DevOps taken care of the security vulnerabilities, the performance related uh, best practices, and also ensure that you know the deployment, the frequent deployment that is happening, is actually uh, at par with the uh, you know the standards that has been uh, set by the team. So how can we drive such a behavior? We can use something uh, which is uh, the social influence and the relatedness drivers where we can actually uh, start uh, you know like a performance uh, um, you know like a kind of matrices where we can actually show the best performance uh, performing you know like deployment so far without any vulnerabilities versus the average the team average uh, you know like what has been there and where do the you know the uh, devops stand in terms of uh, taking care of the person security vulnerabilities and as well as the practices the performance related best practices in this case so that's how we are going to motivate the devops to actually like uh, help them get to a state where they can actually perform optimally in this uh, scenario 
So now the uh, advantages of gamification. Now let's look at some of the advantages that uh, the gamification brings in, in the overall uh, scheme of things. So uh, it definitely, uh, based on whatever examples that we saw, it definitely improves the collaboration and builds bonding among the Agile team members. So it actually helps the uh, team understand the bigger picture of things, which is beyond their, uh, you know, their individual, uh, you know, contributions that they provide into the team, but also requires a lot of collaboration. The collaboration between the QA and the developers, and uh, you know, the DevOps team and the developers, and the product, uh, the project manager, the product owners, and the project manager, as well as the, you know, the QA team. All of them come together and uh, make things uh, better focused at the overall goal of the, of the product or the project. Socialize and communicate ideas more effectively in the team. So it it, it promotes a friendly atmosphere where uh, people are able to, you know, like uh, talk to one another uh, more casually than, uh, you know, like uh, than being in a, you know, stringent framework and to help them to socialize and communicate more effectively in the team offers a different perspective aligned with the bigger picture. So uh, it, it actually like helps the, uh, the, uh, the team player go beyond their, uh, you know, like um, uh, call of duty and, and uh, do the things that, uh, that are aligned with the bigger picture of the product. So in this way that they look at the bigger picture and they are aligned to that. So they, the, the goal setting uh, is changed altogether. The goal setting is all aligned to the product's uh, benefits rather than you know their individual role, the functional aspects of this. Of course, the functional aspects uh, also are taken care by you know uh, numbers or the quality are produced by them. But uh, all of them, when aligned to one common objective or the one common uh, you know like a, um, a goal, that's what actually uh, helps a team excel in in their uh, you know like in all all the dimensions that are there promotes honesty and friendliness within the team. So when, when it's a very friendly atmosphere and when it's like, you know, uh, when it's actually uh, kind of nurtured with gamification, it promotes a very friendly atmosphere and then it actually leaves no room for one to, you know, like uh, brush things under the carpet and bring everything out uh, in the open so that, uh, you know, like everyone can see what is going on out there, uh, which promotes an atmosphere of honesty and friendliness in the team. Uh, visualize what is truly valuable in the team. So this actually um, again like goes back to the goal setting part of it, where any kind of process, uh, including gamification, should actually be focused at goal setting in the beginning. What is the key objective, or what is the what are the key matrices or KPIs uh, that one uh, needs to target at? And once once the entire team is you know focused at that, they will have the individual matrices, but then there will be an overarching. Um, you know, like a KPI for the entire team. So once that visibility is clear, it it uh, it actually gives a highway for all the team players to actually um, you know go in full stage uh, and uh, and achieve what is really required uh, for the team. So these are some of the advantages of gamification, and by by no means these are the limited. I mean, like these are not the ones uh, not not limited to these but uh, there are um, uh, other like uh, in number of benefits for gamification uh, in the agile world as well as in any, any kind of processes out there because you know like uh, it is core human drivers that actually is focused here and uh, they are they are tweaked by uh, different uis and different other temp, uh, you know like um, positive motivations and uh, negative uh, you know drivers that actually make them aware of things so that's how the gamification actually drives human behavior in uh, in in an agile uh, world so let's look at some of the darker sides of gamification although like uh, you know there is a lot of benefits for gamification but if it is not implemented in the right way it's definitely uh, going to lead to you know negative impact as well so any kind of uh, implementation for that matter actually uh, if not implemented optimally, can actually lead to a, you know a, a negative impact in the entire team. Right. So let's look at some of the examples where uh, gamification, when implemented in a wrong way, can actually uh, give a negative impact to, to that entire team. So eyeing on the wrong goals. So uh, goal setting is again like uh, by far the most important part of any kind of uh, activity, any kind of uh, you know framework like this gamification where the goal has to be perfect and clear with all the team members. 
right from the top uh, top down and that's where uh, the goal setting is more so important and uh, if the goal setting itself goes wrong then uh, there's no point of uh, you know like implementing gamification because uh, it will be like uh, shooting in the dark basically like uh, we don't know where it hit so creating a leaderboard that ranks uh, the developers in the order of uh, you know story points accomplished by them in the sprint so here the goal really is to achieve the maximum number of story points right so there is no guarantee that uh, the the uh, the code that they have written are robust enough they are like uh, they have followed all the architectural best practices they have aligned with the you know the other developers to make sure the module that they are actually uh, you know coding on is not going to break or not going to cause any regression so here the objective is purely to get as many story points as possible in a particular sprint so there, there of course like this can be one of the criteria but this cannot be the end goal of uh, of our developer um, you know to actually go up in the leaderboard only based on the number of story points that they have achieved so this results in uh, you know uh, demoralizing performers who are who may not be actually ranking in terms of you know story points but maybe adding additional value through other measures like refactoring badly written code to make the software more robust right so there are there are a lot of uh, different uh, team members who actually are not motivated by you know just going by the story points and achieving uh, that number of story points they might be motivated at doing something bigger than that like for example refactoring a, a broken piece of code or understanding the entire architecture and then uh, re refactoring the architecture in by itself uh, so all of these things uh, they may not um, you know like uh, uh, they, they should not go uh, un, unseen or unnoticed and uh, the goal setting has to be done in such a way that you know like it encompasses all these areas and uh, make sure that you know like uh, uh, the user or the player is aware of you know like what they are doing or what the end goal is of the entire team rather than just focusing on their functional aspects of the functional areas or matrices that are like very limited in the scope So mandatory play. Let's look at some of the examples here. Like um, Aswati, who is a QA lead. One of the things that uh, is worrying her of late is that uh, she is trying to catch up with the number of bugs reported. Uh, so basically, like as a, a QA lead, she is obviously having multiple other roles apart from just you know reporting bugs. She might be you know like uh, mentoring a lot of team members. She might be doing a lot of uh, helping a lot of developers in terms of finding the root cause and uh, trying to fix their uh, try helping them fixing their issues and things like that so she might eventually fall back in terms of uh, the number of bugs or the counts so if we associate um, points against the you know like uh, the bugs that she have actually found including the high medium and blockers high critical and blockers um, she would actually find herself uh, uh, not reaching that uh, on a consistent basis right so uh, this would not, never be uh, the right metrics to actually measure in terms of our performance or uh, although although this is a informal uh, gamification uh, is implemented in the informal way where it's not going to lead to any um, any impact on the appraisal but then um, you know in the back of our mind she's definitely going to feel that you know she's not adequate doing adequately in terms of you know what the other team members are uh, boasting about uh, or the lunchtime discussions, um, you know, like uh, she's not faring well in terms of you know, the numbers that all are, everyone else is projecting in terms of what they have achieved in the, in the number of bugs that they have found. So, uh, you know, a leaderboard or any kind of point system in this case actually will be futile and actually lead to a negative impact in the team where uh, some people will never be able to catch up to the to the uh, the higher rankings and they will be eventually demotivated even though they are really producing good value to the team so the result is no matter what the overall quality of the release is she's still chasing the tail since uh, she needs 40 more points uh, in this case to beat the team's average so it's always giving her the feeling that you know like uh, she's not uh, performing adequately although she might be actually uh, delivering more value than the others in terms of mentoring in terms of you know like uh, uh, identifying the root causes and giving the proper steps to reproduce for the developers and working with them to solve the issues on the regular basis all these things will go unnoticed altogether 
and um, she might actually be influenced by um, you know like uh, the number of bugs uh, that are, that her uh, you know teammates are like actually uh, finding to actually go up in the leaderboard or any kind of scores scoring system for that matter so uh, gamification implemented uh, without again uh, without the right goals or the right uh, matrices in mind can actually uh, lead to negative impact in the team i assume uh, we have only 5 minutes left so sure thank you i'll just uh, wrap it up quickly uh, trying to fix a poor execution here uh, sagar who is a product manager he has his own uh, port, uh, pet features although um, the new workflow is not well architected but it is a really valuable feature for him after all so basically like a uh, uh, product manager also is you know vulnerable to you know calling for uh, things which are immediately like you know tangible or immediately materializing and um, they are also very likely to fall for it and take that as the, one of the key uh, matrices or key uh, criteria for their success so as a product manager you are on your toes uh, to reward the developer as soon as you your pet feature is out of out for the demo or even poorly executed so basically it may be that you know like the feature that is being demoed is actually uh, not of good quality and it's it's breaking a lot of you know codes uh, other codes uh, causing a lot of regression in that case also if you are like rewarding that uh, developer just because um, he or she has worked on the pet feature that um, that it feel is really impactful uh, by no uh, you know like uh, underestimation of the feature but uh, it's not really you know up to the mark so this will result chance in the developer to focus on the reward rather than you know like uh, um, fixing the root cause so it might happen that you know the developer might uh, just end up uh, fixing the uh, yeah, doing a very tacky job in terms of you know fixing the bugs and uh, not really fixing the root cause uh, so uh, this is also one of the examples where um, the execution can fall apart if uh, if it is not rewarded in the right way so promoting the wrong behavior in this case anisha who is a product uh, project manager she actually one of the key aspects uh, that is motivating her is basically like a uh, uh, Avinav, who is a developer who has actually like uh, done really hard in terms of learning a new skill, which is Angular uh, JS, who was proficient in some other uh, you know skills, but recently like uh, she has been asked to you know put in a lot of effort into Angular JS, and he has been working day, day in and out to learn the you know the new skills that that needs to be uh, I mean like so that he can actually get into a team and perform start performing. So you fully empathize the pain of the developer, uh, empathize on the pain of the developer in, uh, he's going through in terms of you know picking up the new skills by just trying hard, and and you tend to reward him for that, right? For just trying hard. What what would be the um, outcome? Is that like uh, the chances are Avina will never actually come up to the speed, and um, uh, the others who are actually seeing that happen might be actually performing well. In terms of the deliverables that they are, because they have already are already proficient in terms of you know like uh, uh, Angular JS or any kind of new technology that uh, that they are working on uh, commonly. But then since Avinav is trying hard, you are trying to reward him. Um, it's going to create a negative impact on the team as well as on Avinav in terms of you know like uh, uh, he will always remain an underperformer because uh, he's not rewarded for the right reasons. So with that, yeah. I'll like to conclude the session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Subhajit, for a wonderful session. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of learning, a lot of takeaways for all of us. And uh, yeah, I know we have very less time left. So let me just uh, jump into the questions which we have. So the, the first question is, uh, how do we uh, customize gamification in virtual world? Sure. Again, um, uh, this is uh, an open uh, uh, ended question, actually, I would say. And uh, we would first actually break it down into the, the goals that uh, we are trying to uh, address in terms of, you know, like uh, gamifying um, the system. So, for example, if we have a problem in hand, we should identify the matrices or the, you know, KPIs of, of that problem and then break it down and then figure out like which are the core drivers that might influence the users in that particular scenario. For example, uh, in the first example, we have seen that, you know, the product owner is actually focused on uh, in terms of you know number of features that uh, is supposed to go in 
influenced by you know the uh, uh, the the client's demands right but at the same time he is not focusing on the uh, the deliverable the overall value of the product that is going to be improving based on the features that go in so it's very important to set a goal first and then like identify the drivers that will help the users go from point a to point b and then implement that um, and um, there are a lot of uh, gamifications perhaps like if we uh, we can we can take it offline well i can share some of the you know like examples that we have which will actually help the you know the members to actually understand that how the gamification can be implemented breaking down different steps uh, based on the human behavior thank right. you subhajit and uh, thank, thank you, you siddharth for your wonderful session